Hello, it's Polish Paul VR. Welcome back to the channel. We are here today to do some more PSVR 2 news and look at the next week releases. Today we start in with something very interesting from Sony. They filled a new patent that suggests they want to use eye tracking for more than just foveted rendering and whatever they working on could end up being pretty cool. I break it all down in just a moment, but it is definitely one of the more intriguing patents they've put out lately. After that, we jump in into next week PSVR 2 releases because it is another packed one. We got four brand new PSVR 2 releases, all dropping on the same day. So it's shaping to be another busy week, which is good. We like busy weeks. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe and drop a like. It really helps the channel grow, grow keeps it relevant in the algorithm and keeps those videos going. We're going to talk about this cool new patent now. So, few disclaimers first. Disclaimer 1. Patents do not guarantee that a product or feature is coming. Companies file patents all the time to explore new ideas, secure protections and keep the competitors away. Some concepts never leave the lab. A great example, back in the PSVR 1 era, people were proper hyped about the new PSVR 2 controllers, PSVR 1 controllers with thumbsticks spotted in the patents that never materialized as PSVR 1 accessory. But it did turn out in the future to look very close to one of the PSVR 2 controllers prototypes. So patents are not confirmations, but they are the best window in, into where time, money and research and development resources are being allocated. Now, disclaimer 2, earlier this year, to Sony, together with Siemens, released the Sony SRH S1 Enterprise Focused headset, which costs over $4,000. It's part of the Zen Spatial Entertainment Creation Platform, and Sony already confirmed that another Enterprise headset prototype is in the development. And this matters because the SRH S1 uses high end punk and glazes. Sony's other prototype seems to use the same optical stack that aligns with SRH S1 tech, basically both using expensive pancake lenses. While Sony Interactive Entertainment PlayStation Division has also patented a new lens design. I spoke about it, I'm gonna link video somewhere here. This lens is smaller, has bigger sweet spot, better clarity, but it is cheaper to manufacture and faster as well than pancake lenses. This new patent we're discussing today might relate to those optics, the ones from PlayStation. It suggests Sony is exploring ways to modernize PlayStation VR hardware, possibly PSVR, you know, PSVR 2 futures revisions or maybe even PSVR 3, I don't know, anyway. But they're trying to do so without sending costs through the roof. Because as we know, one of the main complaints for PSVR 2 was the price. Now, disclaimer 3. All patent details cited here are drawn from publicly available official records. No rumors, no leaks. I will show you the patent number, date of grant or publication, and which brand of Sony filed it. For example, if it's Sony Interactive Entertainment, that normally ties to PlayStation gear. But remember, this is just a research area, not a reveal, not a guarantee. And disclaimer 4, the patent we are discussing was filed by Sony Interactive Entertainment, so PlayStation. The inventor listed is Jeff Stafford, is a summary of his background and relevant PSVR achievements. So he has a track record of inventions under Sony Interactive Entertainment uh, and he's got patents for digital interpupillary distance adjustments. So you know our IPD. And also other patents relating to eye tracking and foveated rendering, uh, what we use now on PSVR 2. And also some to the transparent display and other stuff when it comes to virtual reality displays. But also, he's been publicly referenced during the development of PlayStation VR 1 and the research for PSVR 2. In 2016, an Gadget interview, 
Stafford was cited as one of the lead engineers on Project Morpheus, which was codenamed for PSVR1. 2016 PlayStation Lifestyle, Lifestyle article noted that Jeff Stafford was an engineer in Sony Computer Entertainment America's Research and Development Division, who's been working on PSVR for five years. His portfolio shows continued focus on VR and AR optics, eye and gaze tracking, improved display system and user comfort enhancements. So he has been working on PSVR 2 since the day one Project Morpheus existed and been there since then. So this all supports the idea that when Stafford is involved, the technology is very likely tied to PlayStation VR hardware evolution, rather than, let's say, something non-gaming uh, and consumer electronics. And disclaimer five, when you share my videos uh, where I discuss patents, make sure to mention that patents are not confirmation, reveal or announcement of anything. They are just patents. Sorry for keeping you so long with disclaimers, but sometimes my videos uh, get misquoted and then people think I, I do like a false info when really I'm trying to research everything that I show you. So let's go. Let's talk first about the patent details. This is patent number 12468156. Assignee is Sony Interactive Entertainment. Grand date is November 11th this year. The title is Detection of Add-on Prescription Lenses to a VR Headset with Eye Tracking. Core concept is a VR headset equipped with eye tracking sensors can detect when prescription add-on lens are fitted, measure their characteristics slash adjustments and adjust image rendering accordingly, optimizing clarity, calibration and user comfort. The patent describes a system where the headset detects add-on lens are, uh, when, whenever the add-on lens are attached. Eye tracking calibrates itself differently depending on the presence, type or shape of the lens, distortion corrections, foveated rendering and even UI placement can be adjusted automatically. So putting it all together in more simple terms, the headset would know when you are using prescription inserts and adapt itself so you get the sharpest, most accurate image possible. This is something current third party lenses cannot do. Today the headset has no idea whenever you are using lenses or not. There's a clear trend across not only PSVR 2 but the VR industry. People are buying prescription VR lenses in quite big numbers. Companies that sell them are doing very well in this space and even Apple noticed it and now they're selling its own official first party ZES made Vision Pro lens inserts, proving that market is strong enough for a major tech company to get involved. So Sony maybe noticed, they might have seen the gap in the market and potential extra revenue source, just like the controller plates, charging dogs, the official accessories, they all generate reliable revenue. Prescription lenses could become another high-quality first-party add-on that makes VR more comfortable, protects the internal lenses and brings in extra revenue for Sony themselves. For a company pushing deeper into VR hardware, which Sony is, this makes quite sense. I personally use prescription lenses in VR and they are absolutely worth it, but they are not 100% perfect. And many users, just like myself, can experience few different things, like slight distortion or stretching at the very top or bottom of your view, minor color fringing depending on lens design, and the inserts themselves come in, use, come in loose if you bump the headset. If Sony made their own solution, we could reali realistically expect higher grade optics, perfect physical fit, eye tracking our calibration, possibly even headset lever distortion profiles and official support inside the PS5 PSVR2 system software. That would be a huge leap in comfort and clarity and for people who hate wearing glasses inside VR and also maybe are not so keen on those prescription lenses, which mostly are kind of plasticky, 
this one could be a game changer. This patent doesn't explicitly say PlayStation VR 2 lens is coming soon, but it does show Sony is studying the problem, designing uh, detection systems and planning headset level integrations. So in the accessory world, patents almost always precede product development. And because Apple has already validated the market with first party Vision Pro insets, Sony might see this is the perfect moment to enter the space themselves. The VR lens market is alive and growing, people want this accessory, Sony already owns the headset. The next step seems pretty obvious, whether this will be a system software update or maybe some future headset or maybe nothing, we don't know. But, you know, this patent is not confirmation of a new product. This patent number 1246156 paints a very clear picture of what Sony is thinking about. Better optical comfort, smarter headset calibration and tapping into this nice market where people spending money. So that's let me know what you're thinking about it. I think it's very interesting. Sony, by the way, is uh, makes a lot of movement in the VR space into the in their optics division, but also in their consumer division and also in the gaming division in PlayStation. So there's a lot happening in VR and I'm following it all. So stay tuned to the channel uh, because I know the narrative is that they actually abandon in VR. But the truth is where the research and development money, time and resources are being spent, a lot of it going into VR, AR and mixed reality across all their divisions, all of them. So yeah, stay tuned. Anyway, let's talk about next week releases. First up releasing next week is Demios and Dungeons and Dragons Battlemarked. Dragons, <laughs> Dragons, Battlemark, landing on the 20th of November. If you played Demio before, this is basically taking uh, that formula and dropping it straight into the Forgotten Realms. So you get in a proper Dungeons and Dragons flavor, but in streamlined digital board game format. You control a small party of classic Dungeons and Dragon classes, things like Paladin, Sorcerer, Ranger, Rogue, and the whole thing plays out in turn-based tactical combat. You get deck of abilities and attacks and every turn you adapt into whatever cards you draw. So it's all about planning ahead, combining abilities and trying to control the battlefield before the enemies overwhelm you. You can play it solo, commanding your full team by yourself or you can jump in with up to four players where communication is the key because you'll be lining up combos, placing traps and helping each other stay alive. Teamworks makes a difference here. At launch there will be two full campaigns to work through, taking you to places like Neverwinter Wood and Kragmau Castle. And like the original demo, every room shifts slightly, so even if you replay missions, the layout and challenges won't be exactly the same. Plus there are already more DLC adventures planned, so it looks like a solid amount of content right out of the gate. Next up is Richie's Plank, Plank Experience, which is finally getting a full PSVR 2 remake on November 20th. This isn't just straight port of the old PSVR 1 version, the whole thing has been rebuilt with higher quality visuals, better performance and all the improvements you expect on the newer hardware. And it's coming bundled with all the DLC that released over the years, so there's actually quite a decent amount of content here. If you were around uh, during the early VR days, you remember this one, it was basically the viral VR experience. Everyone used, used it to showcase VR to friends, family and co-workers. Just put someone on a plank at top of a skyscraper and watch the panic set in. Later on, Quest 3 version, it even had a pretty cool mixed reality mode. But sadly Meta ended up delisting it from the Quest Store and that hit the studio pretty hard. Those are the same developers who made the fantastic Max Mustard. And after the delisting of their games, they fell kind of on hard times. PSVR 2 store uh, created some good revenue, revenue from Max Mustard, 
because Max Mustard on PSVR 2 sold best, uh, but Sony Studio still had to lay off most of their team. Meta delisted Max Mustard and Lichy's Plank experience for being out of compliance with Meta platform abuse policy. Toast Interactive themselves says Meta made the decision unliterally. They've been given a reason, but legally they cannot share it yet. And anything beyond that would be just pure speculation at this point, but Toast Interactive hinted that the real reason would blow everyone's mind. But again, they explicitly, explicitly said that they've been firmly advised not to explain it yet. So there is some legal reasons behind it. Something went wrong, but it's shame uh, that Meta delisted such a good and classic virtual reality developer. But anyway, the project is now running on a skeleton crew and the PSVR 2 version doing well is pretty important for their future. This could end up being their last release if it doesn't sell. But I'm pretty confident it will do well. Richie's Plank is still one of the best show someone VR for the first time experiences ever made, especially now with Christmas coming, all your families gathering together. So having a polished PSVR 2 version with all the extras should make it really fun addition to the library and to show to other people. Also dropping on the 20th of November, is RoboQuest VR and this is the big one. RoboQuest has been one of the standout flat screen shooters for a while and now the full VR version is finally coming to PSVR 2. You play as Guardian, basically a super agile robot soldier, fighting your way through a scorched future full of enemy machines. It's very fast, very arcadey and built around rogue light one more rune loop. There are over 70 weapons to find, so every rune feels different. You can dual wield pistols, launch rockets, or you can just punch robots in the face with high speed melee attacks. The levers are procedurally generated too, so layouts and enemy placements shifts each time you play. This isn't just a quick VR port as well, this game being fully rebuilt for virtual reality with proper manual reloading, physical weapons interactions, and co-op planned to come later on as well. And on PSVR 2 specifically, you get full treatment, adaptive triggers, strong control haptics, headset rumble, HDR and eye tracked provided rendering, so the visuals stay sharp and uh, even you know when the things get hectic. And that's why we love our PSVR 2, because it's got those amazing features. If you've been waiting for a big polished VR shooter to sink hundreds of hours into, on PSVR 2, this one is shaping up to be a proper heavy hitter and it's almost here. And also what's almost here, on November 20th we get a new DLC for Spin Rhythm XD. This is the indie pack, which already dropped on Steam VR, and now it's landing on PSVR 2 alongside the Switch version. It is paid DLC priced at around 8 euros slash dollars 7 quid and it comes with seven new indie tracks plus a few nice cosmetic extras. You get in new indie themed outfits for Jim Rivim and Lady J, as well as a brand new garage palette for the menus. Nothing massive in terms of game mechanics, but a good bit of fresh content if you've been deep into the rhythm grind. And as I mentioned before in my news videos, Spin Rhythm XD is a quite good success story and has actually done really well for an indie rhythm game and it sold over 100,000 copies across all the platforms it's released so it's nice to see continued support and a new music pack still rolling out and a nice nice success story okay that's it for today thanks for watching if you like what you see then please press a like because it does help the channel a lot and if you're new to the channel and are not subscribed then subscribe it's always better when it's more of us and that's it Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye.